Maybe. In terms of a non-scoring play, the most recognized snap in NFL history from a long snapper, maybe? Uh, yep. Not connected to a Vinatieri leg yep. or a punter or anyone like that. That would be that of the gentleman who snapped it off the upright. It is time for our 03 championship look back. We are at week nine of the 03 regular season. A 30-26 to win in Denver where the win wasn't the story. And joining us now on the Harbor One hotline, the guy who snapped it off the upright, another friend of Foyer. That would be Lonnie Paxton here with Gresh and Fourier. Lonnie, good afternoon. How are you? Let's go, boys. How you guys doing? We're good. Do you uh, do you co-sign on that that you have the greatest single long snap not connected to a scoring play in NFL <laughs> history by snapping it off the upright? Man, I'll take it. You know, as long as you're talking about me in a in a good way out there, I'll take it. Do you remember like the whole conversation in that game? It was I think the score at that point in time was 23-24 about 2 minutes and change left on the clock. Uh Brad Sealy comes up to you and says, "Hey, you know, snap it over his head and did you on purpose try to hit the goal post?" Uh, well, um so, you know, in practice, I would always get out there early and we'd, we'd mess around and play the aim game, you know, which we'd put money on and see if I could hit certain things, whether it's a pylon or hit the corner of the goalposts or, you know, put it, you know, on a, on a target. I'd get out there with Dable and the punters and this early practice stuff. So coaches would see that I had the ability to, to really, you know, put this thing where I wanted. And I remember, you know, running out on the field and Belichick's like, hey, and he pulled me aside. He's like, Paxton, put this thing in the 10th row. I'm like, all right. So, <laughs> so I, I go out there and I just tried to huck it as far as I could. Um, and, you know, because my accuracy was on point, I threw it through a straight laser beam and, and it hit the, the goalpost. The funny part is that on Monday when we get back and it was time to, you know, do our conditioning and, and, and stretch the legs out, he pulls everyone up. It's like, Paxton, do that again and we ain't running. And so, of course, I missed it, and everyone had to run 10 sprints. So, <laughs> For you, Do you remember that? I, I don't, but I do remember there was always some sort of reward if somebody could do something. Like if Matt Light could catch a punt. Yeah, yeah. And I would say, Lonnie, right. I would say like nine times out of ten, you, I mean, you're probably hitting that thing, right? Nine times out of ten? I would say so. I mean, we used to, you know, the crossbar game. Yeah. I'd get out there, and everyone's throwing it, and I'm snapping it, and um you know, I, I was pretty pretty good on, on judging distance and height, and, you know, it's all I really did, right? So I'm, I'm out there, you know, I, I, I kind of got these stupid party tricks I can pull out and hit stop signs and, and hit the goalpost, and, um, you know, it just sort of so happens that when I was under pressure in front of the whole team and we had to get out of conditioning, I missed that damn thing. I, I, did, I have seen some, like, some YouTube videos of some long snappers, with like somebody with like a you know like a, a cup on their head and like the 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 person who's yep. you know the old school like knife throwing act or they snap it from the second level into a garbage can down on the field or something like yeah that. yeah Those like dude perfect right. type stuff I mean if we, if we I feel like you're missing an opportunity here to get some like likes and subs and subscriptions on YouTube. Well, you know, you know, we're we're part of the old regime now, buddy. So all my stuff is just urban legend. There was no video necessary, no YouTube necessary. Um, I got punters and and kickers, and I mean, I just sent light a video yesterday of me snapping a uh, uh, an axe through my legs, and I hit the bullseye on a block in his, in his, in his backyard. <laughs> so, you know, um, everything is between Tommy the legs. Will, yeah, that's right. Tommy everything. will tell you, man. I. I I, I stole some money from that kid throughout our, our career of just, you know, being able to hit the, the, the quarterback squares from 30 yards and he'd miss it. So um, I take, I take pride in that stuff. It was fun. Lonnie Paxton is with us. We're taking a walk back in this 03 championship season to week nine, the win in Denver. Uh, Lonnie, I want you to go back to the beginning. Tell me a little bit of how the Patriots discovered you. Oh man. Um, it was, you know, I played at a small school, Sacramento State, one double A. Um, really didn't think I had a chance. I mean, you know, you got these big schools like, you know, where, where Fourier went and you got the Colorados and SCs. They get, you know, hundreds of scouts a week. We'd be lucky if we got one a month. And, you know, every time the scout was there, you knew where he was standing. So you'd go over and try to do good. And, you know, when it came time to, you know, put your, uh, you know, put up your bench and your 40 times, you know, there was a couple scouts there and they worked us out and, you know, it was on our, about our business, but my coach, 
uh, was like, hey, you know, take your football out, show me you can long snap. So, as I mentioned, me and my, I had, had some friends who I was always snapping through tires and, and, you know, hitting your right shoulder, then your left shoulder, then hit your belt line, you know, five times. And so I was pretty good at this aim. And so one of my uh, other buddy who was getting looked at the time, John Osterhout, we kind of had this mojo. And so when it t- came time to snap after these workouts, he's like, Hey, you know, kind of gave me that look like, Hey, let's, let's put three on the right, three on the left. Now give me five good ones. And, you know, I remember, uh, when, when we were done, you know, the, one of the scouts being the Patriots guys comes up to me and says, Hey, you, <clears throat> you know, who's your agent? And I was like, do you know how to get an agent? I have no clue. <laughs> and so, uh, my first, my first agent was a real estate agent. Cause I didn't know any better. So, um, that's you can the, sell a house. You can who... sell me. Was that your thinking? <laughs> hey, you can sell Pretty this much. quaint house on the beach. You can sell a, <laughs> a long snapper. You can sell a long snapper. So I had a real estate agent help me sign my contract and I got a plane ticket and a t-shirt as my signing bonus. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. I look at that, uh, the long snapping position and in the beginning it used to be, the long snapper had to also play a position. Now it has become super specialized, and you can just be a long snapper and play for 15 years. I, I would just, if you were, if you could, like, you know, express that to any kid in high school right now about don't worry about getting the cheerleader, learn to snap the ball between your legs, and, le- and you'll have a 15 year career in the NFL and never get hit. Well, you know, come on, man. Give us a little bit more credit. No, I am I mean, giving you credit. Uh, wait, wait, hold you on. Know, you're you're, missed, you're I, taking this as disrespect. My point is no, it is no, such no. a niche, specialized role now where if you take the time to learn it, you'll be better than all the other slaps that are running into walls and have a longer career and make just as much money. That is my point. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's the way to look at it. When I was coming up, you know, I played offensive line and actually – you know, I could always throw really well. So my first, my freshman year of high school, I played quarterback um, until I broke the the center's ankle on a on a on a on a fumble, and they moved me right to O line and never looked back. And so, you know, being able to throw, I could throw between my legs, and I always did it to to help the team. It was never like, hey, this is going to get me to the league, so I got to get good at this. Um, it was just an added element to my game that I became good at. And when it came time to, to have a chance at the NFL, it's like, Hey, we don't want you to do anything else. You do this really well and stay out of our way. And fortunately that worked out. And so for any kids these days who are, yes, being like, Hey, this is my ticket. I would suggest do other things like play another position, play basketball, you know, you know work on other things that, are an added element to your game. But if you're going to be a long snapper, you know, do that really well. But, but you know, be a Swiss Army knife. Be able to do something else if they ask you to. If I had to do it all over again, I, I swear to God, I wish I would have taken the time to learn. I wish I would have taken the time you to learn. You were too cool, man. No, you're right. You know, no, touchdowns I, are pretty cool. Touchdown yeah. catches are pretty cool. No, I know. But it's it's such – it's. I would say it is it – is, would you agree that it is specialized now that kids train just to long snap? I, I would agree on that, but it's such a thankless position. You know, people ask me all the time, you know, were you the greatest long snapper of all time? I'm like, dude, but the greatest long snapper of all time and the worst long snapper of all time is the difference is one snap. It's because you, now you're on TV because you rolled it back. You threw it over the punter's head. The greatest of all time just does it consistently every time. And so there's really, all you can really do is screw it up. And so, you know, when it's 30 mile an hour winds in Buffalo and it's eight inches of snow and, and it's the score is seven to seven and you need a field goal to win. Like the pressure is on and no one wants to put their hands on the ball. And so we pride ourselves on all the repetitions and, and all the practice we put into it that that makes it look easy. It's a seamless, you know, procedure and everyone celebrates in the locker room. But when you look at it, you're like, Oh, you only play 10 plays a game and you never get hit and all these things. Yeah. That makes you want to do it. But when it comes down to it and the game's on the line, no one wants to touch the ball. Well, Lonnie, I thought a part of the reason you objected to Christian, Christian took it as if uh, it was position shaming. You're the guy who was the long snapper and got the cheerleader in the end. So I thought that's the road you were going down in terms of See, raising. Of, well, I didn't want to bring that up, but, you know, the tight ends get the cheerleaders and so do the snappers. No, that's I, it. I, I'm with you. I was just about to ask you. I can only – it is a thankless job, and I was just going to ask you, what is – what was the most stressful position you had been in during your career? I mean, it was always the wind and the rain that wouldn't freeze. You know, it was those 
late November games where it's, you know, swirling wind in Foxborough and the ball's slimy because of, you know, when it was the mud that we used to play on before they went to turf. And, you know, and, and we need this backed up punt to get out of the end zone to, you know, I mean, one of the, the game I tore my ACL in, in this season in uh, 03 against the Dolphins when Teddy, you know, got the pick six. I mean, I played the second half on a torn ACL. And so I couldn't go left or right, but they were bringing, the Dolphins were bringing the heat. So all I could really do is, you know, fall down in front of the guys and just, you know, trip them on their way to, to block the punt. And I remember Russ Hoekstein sitting there strapping up, like I'm running on the field because he was the essentially the backup snapper of Belichick slapped him in the chest like get the frick back just stay <laughs> out there paxton you know no, just, like, I, just I, you had a ball. torn acl <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, know. I know that I is know. crazy but uh but yeah it's um it's one of those things man it's just a stupid human trick that that turned out to be a great career well what's interesting is and you look on on wikipedia here and it says paxton snapped on nine of adam vinatieri's game-winning field goals over four seasons including one in a super bowl and there's the infamous snow angel and all that kind of stuff but lonnie i am curious from your end in terms of the beating you took in just the short amount of time that you were out on the field because the rules were different where not only they were actually allowed to hit people in the NFL, but you were a sitting duck back in those days. Can you kind of walk through the anatomy of those kinds of plays, whereas Fourier has bragged he didn't have anyone to block on one of the <laughs> field goals, so when Vinatieri made it, he jumped into his arms to get into the shot. <laughs> meanwhile, you're getting <laughs> meanwhile you're getting concussed and kicked and hit and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. No, I definitely have some uh, bulging vertebrae in my neck from them just running me over. I mean, you got your head between your legs. You're you're the closest uh, distance to the ball uh, or to, to the kick, rather, right over the ball. So, you know, they'd line up four, five, six guys <clears throat> right over the center and two guards and do what they could. I mean, Daryl Russell picked me up and slammed me, you know, three yards back, stepped on my hand, but we made the 57-yarder. Everyone's cheering, and I'm just scraping myself off the ground and um, – you know, it is what it is. You, you, we win the game. As soon as you see the highlights on Monday meeting, everyone has a quick chuckle because I, you know, I get blasted. Um, on punts, I'd actually, I actually preferred the guys line up on me because I could get my hands on them really quick and go back to my own line days where, you know, really just kind of grappling in that short little box. But, you know, nowadays they got to line up on the left or right of you. And if you guess wrong, you're on skates going way one way or, or you're getting ear hold. And so, um, the rules have changed. Uh, I don't like them as much, <clears throat> but you know, you, you really still got to throw a strike and have it accurate and have it, you know, nice spiral to get through any elements. And um, that really determines the play. Uh, so two questions left for me though, and I'll let you go. Gresh one quick one. Could you, were you so uh, skilled at snapping the ball that when the holder caught it, the laces were already out? Correct. Was that yep. the goal? Was that that was the goal, rotation. right? Yeah, so you would. Yeah, he was so. And a half rotation. Yeah, that I feel like that's amazing. That's a, that's a quality to that position. That I don't think people really understand how much goes into. It. And the other one is obviously we've been doing this whole look back for the last I don't know nine weeks. Really had a d bunch of different people on different positions, and I'm just curious, like what stands out to you that for that season you had already won one. You know, nine and seven the second year. You come back in that third year. Brady's fourth year. Ups and downs, you know, guys leaving, guys coming in, starting two and two, and now you're on the road. And it's you just get a win against the Denver Broncos. Where were you at that year, uh, based on how everything was going? I mean, it was, um, you know, it was nice to be back, kind of in that uh, it, with that momentum after you know the the nine and seven year didn't make the playoffs, and so you know, I think we brought that was your Rodney got in and and some new faces in there and. It was just a whole <clears throat> different vibe to the locker room. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that win on Monday Night Football in Denver was huge. You know, we notoriously kind of stunk it up against them in Denver. And uh, it was nice to come away with that. And, and obviously, you know, that was the year I tore my ACL. I missed the Super Bowl. And there was kind of a fiasco to replace me. We went through a couple different long snappers. And then in the Super Bowl that, that week or two weeks prior, we signed a guy, you know, Brian Kinchin, who was like 42 at the time. And then, the kid ends up slicing his finger with a steak knife the morning of and gets stitches. And then he's rolling these, the punts and field goals back. I mean, there was a couple, you know, bad snaps in that game that Ken Walter 
was able to recover from. <clears throat> but, you know, at the end of the day, when it came time to throw a strike and the game winner, he got it done. So, you know, I just remember uh, being on the field with a cane and, and looking up at Tom and, and, and these guys because, you know, notoriously the, the pro bowlers – we're flown on Kraft's big plane to the, to the Pro Bowl if we won the Super Bowl. And so Adam made the Pro Bowl and, um, or was that, or someone made the Pro Bowl that I think it was Adam. And, um, you know, I was like, Hey, he's sending me to the Pro Bowl. Cause you know, this is what happens. And I, you know, he's like, yeah, you know, you, I'm going with my wife from Florida. If we win, you just got to ask Tom if you can get on the big jet with Mr. Kraft. And so <laughs> we win. And so I'm looking at, at Tommy and me and Copen are like, Hey, we on the jet. <laughs> and, uh, and we were like, yeah, we're on baby. So literally 24 hours later we're on this massive plane heading to Hawaii. And you know, one of those great experiences, but you know, I missed the last few games. The only times I missed games in my career. Um, but such a fun season to really, you know, get back on stride. Uh, and finally, I get to ask this question to the friends of Fourier. Do you have a Christian Fourier moment, Lonnie Paxton that sticks out to you? Jesus. You don't have to have oh, one. It's totally fine. Don't even no. think about it. All good. All I good think, memories. You know what was really fun was was Christian always thought he could sing karaoke, <laughs> and you know when we were when we'd have these kind of you know these victory celebrations on the plane on the way home, and we all you know this was before like portable speakers, so you know we got the I got a computer with all the Apple music on it, and it was like you know pick your own playlist, and you know guys are actually picking great songs, and in Fourier he's coming up with like in sync songs. No, and no, no. New kids on the no, block. No, I mean, no. Totally, this, don't not listen to him. I had one song, one song only, and it was uh, Jesse's girl. That was it. That's that was right. my song. There you go. So <laughs> in sync. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> I love it. Hey Lonnie, thanks for the time, man. This was a uh, hell of a lot of fun uh, and uh, hopefully we have a reason to do it again soon. Thanks for the walk down memory yeah. lane. Anytime, guys. Thanks, thanks, buddy. That was great stuff. Oh man. How about Lonnie? How about that? Telling Hoekstein, get back. I, I mean, the, that's unbelievable. There, there is. There's so many aspects. But just like the whole, like, how many rotations did he say? Like, it was there was so one precise. And a half, I think one it was, and a half rotations. Some, how about him? Where, and you caught it, and then all they had to do it wasn't this Ooh. laces out thing. The laces were already out, right? And then him trying to you know sneak on the plane, right? And then dragging Copen along with him. I didn't. I didn't know that existed. That, I would have jumped on that plane. I know you would have been. Uh, you'd have been in line, brother.